City of Brass is a first person rogue light sort of hack and slash game that came out last year I believe for PC and consoles and now it's made its way to Nintendo Switch. So basically the main point of this video is to disseminate what's the difference between the other versions that released and the Nintendo Switch version as well as just give a kind of overview of the game itself and whether it's worth playing on any platform. Uh, so for Nintendo Switch there have been a number of you know cutbacks obviously visually and um, performance wise it can take a bit of a hit um, and honestly it can be kind of distracting uh, especially when you say use your whip to cause an explosion or to create some sort of animation to happen in the world whether it's triggering traps or breaking some board sort of fences that are in the way of a, a doorway um, it takes this sort of like momentary freeze sometimes and then you can 100% see the resolution drop a little bit and it is quite distracting and consistent so it's not something that's an anomaly it kind of happens all the th all the time um, which is a bit disappointing because the, vi the game can be at times visually quite nice it's just when anything where effects happen it takes a hit instantly um, with that slight kind of momentary freeze um, and then sometimes after that happens or if it doesn't quite happen it will definitely chug a little bit for a moment um, and overall what that does then is create a game that's not that fluid to play which is a bit disappointing given that um, it can be quite a tough game because you have a number of hearts and each trap every enemy they can deal quite a bit of damage to you whether it's half a heart or a full heart so you can kind of guess that pretty quickly you can run out of health um, there's only a few things around the world that can replenish your health there are some vendors uh, to come across randomly as well as potions uh, but other than that health is scarce um, and that's obviously then detrimental uh, to the whole enjoyment of the game but the game itself is a bit unusual I mentioned a moment ago about traps and the traps themselves range from like fire spewing to acid to traps in the ground um, and while they add a bit of sort of variety to sort of always making sure you know where you're going because it can be so easy to just get caught in a fight um, and then feel satisfied that you've completed a bit only to walk into a trap and lose quite a bit of your health the one thing though that is to me kind of unforgivable especially in like an action style game because it tries to be half action half sort of take your time pace get to know the enemy uh, animations and their attacks so you know when to take a step back and move forward because everyone has a sort of they all have canned animations each enemy type have a certain sort of set of maneuvers that they will do so you can kind of read what they will do and sort of gauge your movement and attack around that. Um, but yes, yeah, some traps, particularly the the floor trap, it can kill you on one hit, one hit because you will fall into it and there'll be spikes at the bottom of it and that's the end of your run and when you end your run you've got to start all over again. So when you consider that, um, it's damn frustrating. Uh, but uh, like... As you go through you will find items, none of them are taught you are said what they do. So you get stuff like Soul of Ice, Ring of Attraction, tons of others and you don't know what they are until you buy them and then you check your journal and it'll give you some, at least the main gist of what it will do. Some of them are self-explanatory especially given by the symbols like we'll have coins so you'll get more money maybe from enemies or more. Uh, it, like there's one that's attracted to it where it will show up and you sort of it makes it easier to then pick up money, but it, they're all sly things. Nothing's, nothing really changes the gameplay hugely, um, which is fine because it's it's more sort of incremental uh, bits that it's this mixed with this and this and this will make the run more enjoyable or at least give you a feeling of you could do well. But it is one of those games where like one bad room can pretty much end it all and it's simultaneously kind of one of the best parts of it and the most frustrating and um, so on nintendo switch it works well enough the analog sticks are okay and um, but when you start to get through the game and you get to the tougher um, enemies or rooms and bosses and um, 
it can be quite frustrating uh, but there are cl there's a lot to unlock and reveal in this game from sort of different styles of visuals which is quite nice it's got the arabian nights look to it um but then they sort of bring in some lush greenery as well to some levels and it does bring a nice aesthetic i think it can look really nice on nintendo switch it's just it will slow down you'll see huge resolution drops randomly well not randomly consistently whenever certain things happen um but it's still one of the more unique roguelike games um, and there's not a ton of first person games on nintendo switch so if you're itching for something first person that isn't crazy like like doom or something or wolfenstein this is pretty interesting it's just got a bit of cutbacks to actually hinder the enjoyment of the game a bit